Um, so, as Chris said, I'll talk a little bit about the surgery for pancreas cancer. Um, first thing, one thing that's important, though this is an old study that was done, that pancreas cancer does improve survival with the resection. So if you can get surgery to remove it, it improves survival. It's not the only, uh, certainly the only treatment, and as Dr. Ang mentioned, all the chemotherapy, and we'll hear about radiation as well, they're very important. But the key thing is to get patients to the point where they can have uh, resection. The biggest issue with pancreas cancer surgery is the presence um, to the vasculature. And, and Drs. Kim and Ang, everyone mentioned with the staging, the vein, the portal vein, or the superior mesenteric vein, which becomes the portal vein as it goes towards the liver, and the superior mesenteric artery are key blood vessels that supply the entire intestine or drain the entire intestine of blood. And therefore, people cannot live without those veins being intact and functional. And the surgery, just by location, happen, happens to involve proximity to those veins. They travel underneath the pancreas or nestled near the head and the neck of the pancreas, and I'll show you some other diagrams soon, that lead to the liver and the intestine, and therefore, if those vessels are involved, that can be the rate-limiting step, even if it's not spread. So a key thing is identifying that with all the imaging and staging that we heard about before, and then, of course, safely, safely performing the surgery. And this is one of those cases where it involves uh, the, the cancer involves the major blood vessels, one of the major blood vessel trunks of the abdomen. So this is the aorta, that's the liver, and one of the, the celiac trunk, which is one of the blood vessels that gives off vessels to the spleen, to the liver, and to the stomach, is involved in the cancer and therefore cannot be removed. And one question often that comes up with patients is, well, can you remove the majority of the cancer and just leave the part about the blood vessels uh, uh, alone. In actuality, there's no uh, benefit to doing 95% or even 98% of the operation. It's about removing the entire cancer, and if it can't be done, then we would not submit a patient to the risk of surgery. Uh, we talked a little bit about staging uh, with Dr. Ang, but one thing I just wanted to go over is how sort of the separation between involvement of those blood vessels or not involvement of those blood vessels and how that's uh, significant in the staging, and that determines the ability to have surgery or not. So you can see for tumors that are small but limited to the pancreas or even larger, if they do not involve those critical blood vessels, then they remain in the lower 2 or 0 through 2 stage, as opposed to uh, when they involve either large or involving the blood vessels, then uh, it gets the, the unresectable stage, as we call it, and, and a higher stage. So to go over the anatomy, you've seen a lot of schematics of the, uh, this part of the abdomen, but this is the stomach, and you can see the blood vessels that travel underneath the pancreas and up towards the liver or down in the artery towards the intestine, and, and the pancreas going across the body like this, and this is where a tumor would be. So that is the, the key um, factor in assessing the resectability, as we call it, for the tumor. Just another diagram with the specimen removed. You can see the edge of the pancreas, which has been cut off. The specimen is removed, which is the head of the pancreas, and the duodenum, which is wrapped around it. The gallbladder also comes out. That's a common question that, that often patients ask. The bile duct is divided, and the stomach is divided, and then all three of these things will be reattached. Again, to show another schematic, um, what's in red is removed. So the gallbladder, bile duct, and the head of the pancreas, and the duodenum. And then we reconstruct each of these three organs to uh, allow them to uh, drain in their normal function. So the pancreas is connected to the intestine. It, the bile duct from the liver is connected to the intestine. And then the stomach is connected. And then all three of these, the, the fluid and then food you eat, would go downstream towards the lower down uh, part of the, of the bowel. That is what's known as the Whipple resection, the traditional Whipple involves removal of a part of the stomach, not a large part, as you can see. I'll talk a little bit about one of the other uh, um, types of operation that is called pylorus preserving, which keeps the entire stomach intact. It's really uh, just a minor variation of the traditional operation. This is just for other parts, sorry for the fuzzy picture, but the, for a distal pancreas, it does not involve these organs. So if you had to pick where to get the, um, the uh, tumor or where to have re-removed, it is the uh, left half of the pancreas with the tumor, which often involves the spleen since the blood vessels go along with that. 
So um, as you can see, even with uh, resection in big centers, um, survival is still relatively poor, although improved if you can have resection, and therefore uh, adding all these other treatments, and even though surgery is getting more uh, fine-tuned, um, it's clearly not just about surgery, it's about the, all the different therapies that can be done. I'll talk a little bit about controversies um, and what we do uh, in, in some of the other surgical management. One is laparoscopy. Often we start the operation with uh, what's called a diagnostic laparoscopy. Um, that is to look in the abdomen because even with all the CAT scans, even with all the MRIs that we do in EUS, sometimes it is spread. And you can see here on the lining of the abdomen, small nodules which show spread of the cancer. If that were the case, there's no benefit to doing the, the main operation and we would, um, we would then back out and, and chemotherapy would be the only therapy uh, possible. I mentioned pylorus preserving. This is where we leave the entire stomach. So the pylorus is the muscle that um, helps uh, keep food in the stomach until it's finished digesting uh, and breaking down some of the food. And then it relaxes and lets the food go downstream. The traditional Whipple would divide the stomach here Whereas in the pylorus preserving, we keep the entire stomach and just take one or two centimeters of duodenum, which is the next uh, organ involved. Um, this was developed in that patient. Sometimes patients have um, what's called dumping of food or um, it goes through the intestine or the stomach too quickly. And so keeping the pylorus might keep that in, uh, food intact. In actuality, there's been no major difference in any of, certainly any of the outcome from a cancer standpoint. Um, sometimes it takes the stomach a little longer to, uh, to empty because the pylorus gets a little of a spasm right after surgery. But in actuality, um, it's a minor variation and it's really more of the um, um, technical uh, status of the operation that would determine if we did pylorus preserving or not. Um, sometimes people have referred to this to the modified Whipple. In actuality, it's really, as you can see, the vast majority of the operation is exactly the same. It's just that small portion of the stomach that's different. Vascular resection is another issue. Um, occasionally, um, the, the blood vessel that uh, we talked about that's being involved, actually we can remove if only a small portion of it is involved with tumor, and we can use a graft, whether from the neck or the leg or sometimes the abdomen, to reattach the area where the tumor was and uh, maintain blood flow to the liver and therefore allow for vascular resection even in a, what's called advanced pancreas cancer. You can see here in the schematic that the, the tumor has been removed of the pancreas or the, mass, or the the area of the pancreas is being moved with tumor right here and the vein where it's involving here would be divided and then either reattached unless that's too long of a gap and then you can put what's called a graft in between. Um, this has been done. It can be done safely here in other busy centers. Um, and this is a, a recent study that showed in actuality it definitely is more risky, and though it can be done safely, it is still, um, it applies a more advanced disease and, and a higher stage, and therefore the survival does mimic that. Um, but it can be done safely uh, with, with uh, experienced uh, operators. Um, one thing about the surgery, which Chris mentioned, is a very, is sort of a feared complication, is sort of the complications and the outcome. So both from a complication standpoint and from a survival standpoint, you can see from one surgeon who's quite busy and looked in sort of the eras, as we've done more of these, the survival and outcome has improved. And therefore, um, we've really reached a point that it's quite um, safe and, can be, and, and as effective as, as a treatment. Um, but the other, it's not the only answer. And the other treatments for pancreas cancer are, are critical. Extended resection is something that's come up as well. That involves not only the pancreas and the duodenum and some of the lymph nodes surrounding, but really all of the soft tissue and lymph nodes in the entire area. This is going down towards the vena cava, which is the main blood vessel uh, that goes up through the liver to the, to the heart and from the lower uh, extremities, um, and all this area here. In actuality, it is a bigger operation, and in a, a study that was done, um, a few studies that have done have shown that in actuality there was no difference in the survival um, and some increase in some of the, uh, in the complications. And therefore, um, this is something that we don't do. So, so more or bigger is not necessarily better when it comes to the operation. Um, part of the rationale why it is not the case that this was beneficial is that the recurrence is not actually local, meaning in the area where the pancreas was most of the time, but it actu in actuality is distant or metastatic. And therefore, 
doing a bigger operation in the local environment would not change the fact that there are cells that got to the liver or the lungs or the abdominal cavity. One last thing about palliation. That is sometimes surgery is needed to uh, alleviate some of the complications of an advanced pancreas cancer. Uh, as Dr. Ang mentioned, palliation is not something we do for cure, but is for uh, alleviation of symptoms or improvement of quality of life. Sometimes um, the bile duct uh, can't be uh, opened up from a stent that's put in, and we would have to do what's called a surgical bypass, although that's usually not the case. The duodenum can be blocked, so the stomach can't um, empty. And again, sometimes it can be done through endoscopic, and I'd say that's the preferred choice, but if it can't be done that way, then we can, um, we can uh, do it surgically. And uh, um, of course, we have to consider the uh, outcome and what we're trying to achieve with the patient's desires and goals with our ability to actually realize those goals. So we have to think about life expectancy um, of how, how significant the obstruction is, can it be managed in non-surgical means. So to summarize, it remains a lethal uh, and, and difficult disease to treat. Surgical resection has become safer and more effective over time. Um, there's no role for that extended operation that we talked about, and certainly further treatments and studies are needed to impact the disease more. Thank you.